Hello friends and welcome back to our Heirloom Afghan Crochet Along. My name is Alicia and I'm so glad that you're here. This week we're going to be working on block 11 of our Heirloom Afghan and it's called the Horizontal Relief Stitch. Now if you have the chance, go back and watch our tutorial on this block. We will be covering how to complete the front post double crochet as well as the back post double crochet. Those are the stitches you will be using in this block. We're going to be starting with whatever color you have chosen for color B. Mine happens to be gray and I'm going to call this one my uh, tin roof block. It reminds me of a tin roof out on my chicken coop. So I've started my slip stitch. I'm going to get that on my hook here. And we're going to chain 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, whoops, 28, I got away from myself, 27, right there. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. So here we have our 27 chains and we're going to go right into row one. We're going to complete a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, here's our fourth. You can either go into this front loop here or if you like to work in the bar in the back, if that's what you're accustomed to, you certainly can do that. We're going to yarn over, go into our chain, yarn over and pull our yarn back through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first double crochet. Now these chain three that we skipped, that's going to count as the first double crochet of our work. So this first actual double crochet is actually going to consider our second double crochet of this row. We're going to work all the way across and we're going to end up with 25 double crochet. And remember, that includes this chain three. So yarn over, we're going to go into our very next stitch, very next chain there. Grabbing our yarn, pulling it back through, we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And there is our next double crochet. While we enjoy the music, I'm going to go ahead and just work my way across my row, and then we'll count them when I get to the end of the row to make sure that I have the appropriate amount of double crochet, especially since I lost count of my chains when we were doing that because I was distracted.
here at the very last chain, I'm going to complete a double crochet there. And there's the end of row one. I'm actually going to remove my hook. And I'm going to kind of use it to help me count. I want to make sure that I do indeed have 25 double crochet across. Remember, I'm counting these chains that I skipped as my first double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. That's exactly where I want to be. I'm going to go ahead and put my hook back on my work here. And let's move on to row two. I'm going to chain one and turn my work. And we're going to go right into completing a front post double crochet around the post of each stitch in row one. Let's talk about that for a second. We've discussed in earlier blocks the anatomy of our stitch. We have our loops here on the front, our front loops and back loops. And then the body of the stitch that we've completed, it has this post. This entire thing is considered the post of the chain right here, this entire part of our stitch that we did. This entire body of the stitch that we worked before, that's considered the post of the stitch. The stitch in its entirety, and then we have our front loop and back loop on top. We're going to be working around the post of each and every stitch. Now some of these are going to be a front post where we come in from the front we're going to go around the post and come back up through the front again so that we can collect our yarn and complete our stitch. Some of them in the next row after we complete row two, in row three, we'll be coming up from the back and going around our post and going out the back again. And our post will actually be on our hook behind our work. That will be the back post uh, double crochet. So one will be a front post, one will be a back post. So just keep that in mind as we're working on our block. Now we want to make sure we complete a stitch around each and every stitch that we work on here from row one. So we're going to complete a front post double crochet around even this one here. And it's a little difficult because all we're doing is going in, going behind, and coming up. So basically we're just working in the space between our first and second stitches here. But we're coming up from underneath. So Keep that in mind because that will come into play when we do row three. Each row will uh, alternate between row two and row three. And you just have to remember our first stitch and our last stitch are just a little tricky. So yarn over, we're gonna act like we're gonna go in behind and back up through. Yarn over and pull our yarn through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And there's our first front post double crochet. It's basically just completing a double crochet in the space between our first and second double crochet from round one. Yarn over and we're going to go in between the one we just completed here. We're going to go here behind our post and come back up. So we have that entire post on our hook here. Yarn over and pull our yarn all the way completely through so that we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, and here we have a front post double crochet around that post. We're going to complete front post double crochets all the way down this row. Let's do one more together, and then I'll just listen to the music and enjoy the music and meet up with you at the end of the row again. So again, we're going to go around the post of this next stitch. We're going to yarn over, going in from the front behind the post and coming up the front again, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And here we have our front post double crochets. So I'm just going to continue on working these and I'll meet you at the end of the row.
at our last double crochet from row one. And we're going to complete a front post double crochet around that. But don't forget we've got our chain three that we skipped here. We're going to go ahead and yarn over and we're just going to kind of wrap around that chain three post and complete a double crochet as well. And that takes us to the end of row two. Now from the front, it looks like we just got double crochets going. It's nice and neat, but look how squishy. Do you see that? It's thick because as we turn it over, we've created this ripple, this ridge. And that's what reminds me of a corrugated tin roof out on my chicken coop. And so we're gonna have just a series of these ripple ridges on the back of our work. And the, re the way we're going to complete that now to get another ripple on our tin roof is we're going to turn our work and we're going to do back post double crochets on our block and you'll see it starting to come together but this is nice and thick this is going to be beautiful on your blanket so we're going to chain one and turn and we're going to start working on row three now the top of these stitches here these ridges we're just going to make sure we keep them folded down we don't want to work in these at all we're working again only in the posts of row two. You see our posts there? We're just going to be working around those and we're going to be completing back post double crochets. Now just like in row two, the very first one's going to be a little bit tricky because there's really no way to go around it, so to speak. But we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook. If this were a back post, we would be going in from the back around the front and out the back again. So basically all we're going to be doing is just going in between these first two stitches, grabbing our yarn and pulling it back through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. There's really no way to wrap around that post. But we're going to wrap around this very next post and we're going to go in from the back of our work, around our post, and out the back again. So we're going to yarn over, and we're going to go, we're just going to dip our hook behind here and come up in between, go over that post and out this back here. And you can see that we've got the entire post loaded onto our hook here. We're going to yarn over and pull our yarn back through to the back again here. See, we're in the back. We're going to yarn over and go through two loops and yarn over and go through two loops. And we've just completed a back post double crochet. We're going to do that again right here in this post, right here. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to dip down and go behind our work and come up to the front, hello, go over the post and poke out again through the back. We're going to grab our yarn and pull it through, working in the back of our work again, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, one more time. We're going to work in the post right here. This is our very next stitch. Yarn over. We're going to dip down and poke up from the back. Say hello. Go over our post and poke out through the back again, grabbing our yarn and pulling it all the way through so that we're working in the back of our work here on our block. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And see, we're creating our second ridge here. So we're going to complete back post double crochets all the way across our block and I'll meet you here at the end while we enjoy the music.
here to the end of our row. And we still have right here, we're going to go around this last little post here and complete a double crochet. There we go. We have our first two ripples on our tin roof. This is very thick. Look at how thick this block is going to be. It's going to be nice and warm. If you'd like to make an entire blanket out of this, I will share with you that it doesn't matter how many uh, your initial chain is. Uh, you just want to make sure that you've got enough there and you do your skip three and start your first double crochet in the fourth chain from hook so there are no multiples just however long you'd like to make it i will tell you though it's a little bit of a yarn hog you're going to use up a lot of yarn to make a blanket with this stitch but it will be soft and thick and squishy i bet you that would be lovely to cuddle up with with a book on a cold night all right we're going to chain one and turn our work and we're going to go right back to row two which is going to be our front post double crochet so again we don't have any way to really go around this post we're going to yarn over we're going to act like we go in from the front behind and come up from behind on this post here and then complete our double crochet just like that now we're going to complete front post double crochet all the way across and when we get to the end of this row we're going to count our work make sure we have 25 stitches in total. So again front post double crochets all the way across our row. And when we get done with this I'll show you it's going to push these loops to the back and it will start the next ripple on our old tin roof. I will be very interested to see what color you have chosen because if you've chosen a fun color, a pastel or a jewel tone, it can change what you want to call this block. Are you doing it in a tone of green and it looks like maybe rows of corn in a flyover state? Are you doing it rows of pink and it looks like little pink rows of carnations? Maybe yours is going to be completed in a color of purple and they'll look like rows of lavender. So many ways to look at it once you start seeing the rows come together be very interesting. Now you may say you're going too fast. I can't keep up with you. That's okay. You don't have to crochet at the same rate that I do. You take your time. You do what's comfortable for you. You can always pause and get caught up. If you need to you can rewind and see what I've done. These tutorials will always be made available to you, so you can come back and watch them when you need to. There's no stress in this, no worries. This is not a competition, it's simply a crochet along. All right, we're coming up to the end of our row, which is a repeat of row two. Getting to the end here, here's the last true front or this is actually a back post but it's the last true stitch that we have from the prior row we're going to go around that from the front and complete our double crochet and then this is this one here we're going to go around that and complete a double crochet now I'm going to give myself a little room there so I don't pull any of my stitches out I'm going to use my hook to help me count again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four and twenty five I have just the right number that I need so I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work and look 
Look at the little rows we're getting on our little tin roof. Isn't that cute? And it's going to change again now that we do row three again because we're going to be working in these last stitches that we completed and we're going to be doing the back post double crochets. So again, acting like we're coming up from the back over and back down, we're basically just going in between these first two stitches here to complete our first back post double crochet, which really it just looks like a double crochet. Who are we kidding? But that's how we have to start our row. So we're going to go around the post of this very next stitch right here. We're going to do a back post double crochet. Yarn over. We're going to go in from the back. We're going to go around that post. See how the post is on our hook. We're going to grab our yarn and pull it back through to the back of our work again. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And we're going to complete our back post double crochets all the way across. Again, going in from the back, around, out the back again, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through. Sometimes it takes a little finessing of the hook so that your yarn does not fall off your hook. Just take your time. And if you ever wonder exactly where you're at, you can kind of just pull that work apart. You can see that you're on this one here, so we're going to go to this next one here. And completing our stitch. Do one more together from the back, around the post, grabbing our yarn carefully, pulling it through, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to continue on doing the back post double crochet across our block and I'll see you at the end of the row and just enjoy the music. Right, we're at the end of our row we have the post of our last stitch plus where we turned so we're going to go around the very last stitch that we worked and we're gonna go from behind <laughs> and go around that last one there at the end where we completed and then did our chain to turn our work there we go Look at all these little ripples that are starting to form in our little tin roof. Very nice. You can see almost ribbing starting here. And so I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to complete row two again. And um, this is a true 
crochet along. I won't be fast forwarding. I won't be cutting to the end. I'll just uh, have the beautiful music playing. You can crochet along with me and go through the process. And look how it's flat on the front of our work here. This is actually the back of our work. When we put our afghan together, we're going to want the ridges up. So this is actually, technically, the back of our work. So going right back into row two, yarn over, and we're going to act like we're going from the front, behind, and up, and completing a double crochet where we did our last stitch in our turn. Yarn over from the front in between. We're going to grab the post of that next stitch. Yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to go right into the next uh, row of our work here, completing all front post double crochet across. in the very last stitch that we actually worked and then working around where we turned our work and we're at the end of our row I'm going to chain one and turn and here we're going to be working row three again which is going to be our back post double crochets yarn over acting like we come up from the back around our post and down through the front we're basically just again working a double crochet in the space between our first two stitches yarn over we're going to go from behind our work and come up in between our stitches wrapping around that post and going out the back again so that the entire post is on our hook there grabbing our yarn and pulling it through carefully we've got three loops on our hook Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to continue this row again, working back post double crochet all the way across our block. And just remember that when you pull your hook back through, after you've wrapped around the post and you grab your yarn to pull it through, sometimes you just kind of have to tilt that hook a little bit to keep that yarn from falling off. Also, I want to point out something important here. Let's yarn over. We're going to go from the back and make sure when you put your hook through to grab the post. Don't go up in here where you're just grabbing the two loops. It's, it's really easy to go into that little space that you've created right here. Don't go there. You want to make sure you go all the way around the entire post. 
and then grab your yarn and pull it back through. I notice as I work on my block, sometimes my hook just kind of wants to pop up here and go in between and grab the front loop and the back loop. We want the entire post. There's another uh, piece of yarn there that kind of wants to kind of dip out of the way. Make sure you get that post on there, not the loops. the end here again we're going to wrap our yarn around go in from the back and just kind of catch that where we turned in our last stitch and chain one and turn this is a very thick piece of work now at this stage I'd like to encourage you let's check our gauge we're going to grab our square number two that we worked up, this is our half double crochet. Let's place our square number 11, our block 11 on top, and see how we're looking for our gauge. All right. Now as I look at this, I can see that I'm where I need to be side to side. I wanna make sure I have enough room here to do my first round of edging. It's just gonna put single crochets of the same color of this gray around the edge here so we have a nice clean surface to then work our next row of edging, our round of edging, which will be our main color that we'll connect all of our squares with. So I look like I'm doing very well for my gauge. Now when you check it at the very end here, you want to make sure that this has not rolled under. You want it right there. So looks like I'm about a third of the way done with my block. So let me go ahead and move block two out of the way. We're going to use that again in a little bit just to uh, check to make sure when we reach the size that we want. But I've chained one and I'm going to go ahead and turn. And I'm going to complete row two again with our front post double crochet. And we'll enjoy the music as we work across and I'll see you when I get to the end.
to the end here, we're just going to go ahead and do our double crochet around that last post there. Chain one and turn. Now you can see this is curling. It's just because of the nature of the stitch. It'll flatten out for you as you're working on it. You can block this if you need to, if you feel you need to, but I assure you once we get the edging on and once we um, attach it to our other squares, it's going to lay flat. You're going to be just fine. But let's continue on with row three. See how that popped off my hook there? When you do the back post, again, it takes just a little bit of finessing your hook to make sure that your yarn doesn't fall off. It happens though, so just be mindful of it. And I like to kind of tilt my work a little bit. You'll see as I'm working on my block, Sometimes I'll just kind of tilt my work a little bit so that it's easier for me to manipulate. There's nothing saying, it's not like driving, you don't have to have your hands at 10 and 2. You can turn your work so that it works best for you to manipulate where your stitches go and how you can hold that hook and hold your work. It works best for you. We all have our own little individual things that we do when we crochet. How we hold our hook, how we hold our yarn, how we hold our project while we're working on it. So make sure you find what works for you, what you're comfortable with, and you go with that. Once you get working, you'll find yourself developing a little rhythm, and it will all just start flowing. and thick. And back to row two, which is our front post, double crochet.
post double crochet right there chain one and turn our work and look at all of our little tin roof ridges starting to form aren't those fun <laughs> I'll tell you what if you like working front post and back post double crochets and you're looking for a very thick afghan for your bed for winter time this is a wonderful stitch this is so thick and what's nice is there's not a lot of holes in it like you would have in a traditional double crochet afghan you'd have a lot of holes this really eliminates a lot of holes for little fingers and toes to poke through and it would really be nice and warm it would be a warm blanket but again I've got to warn you it's a yarn hog you're gonna use a lot of yarn making this blanket going back again to row three we're gonna go from the back up over and down which is right here just like we're doing a regular double crochet and then we're going to go right into our back posts. Oops, there we go. I'm doing yet another row of back post double crochet. to the end of row three again. I'm just gonna go around our last little bit there. Again, this is not a race. I want you to crochet at whatever speed is comfortable for you. Take your time. I don't want you to say, woohoo, I finished my block. I did it at the same time that Alicia did, or I finished ahead of her because I knew what to do. I also don't want you to say, oh gosh, I'm not going to do this because it takes me forever. Again, this is not a race. I want you to focus on finishing and putting out a quality piece that you're going to be proud of, that's going to go on to your heirloom afghan 
and will last you for generations. I don't want you to make this a piece where you have to see if you can get it put out as quickly as you can. This is an heirloom afghan. You want the quality there. You don't have to worry about how quickly you can get this completed. So again, the tutorials will always be here. And these full block sessions will always be here for you to refer to. You can come back when you need to. The focus is you. I want you to put out a beautiful afghan. redo that stitch. I don't like the way that one I caught an extra piece of yarn there and I wasn't happy with that. There we go. Turn our work. Look at our tin roof come together. And like I said, depending on what color you use, it might look like rose of corn or rose of lavender. It really just depends on what color you choose to do this with. Look how thick, look how nice and thick this square is going to be. Alright, on to our next row, row three. We're going to yarn over, up, over, down, right here, and moving across. Now I will share with you the back post double crochet on this block is a little more difficult to get to just because you have a limited amount of space to work with it feels like because of the way that the row two pops up. Just make sure you give yourself the space to recognize where the last one was that you worked and move on to the next one. Remember you're moving across, not up and down, so you kind of want to go to the next stitch over. You have to really look for it sometimes and recognize where it's at. But as you work this square, you'll get a feel for where it's at. chain one and turn and we're going to go right back into our front post double crochet row which is row two and work our way across. I think we're probably about at least two-thirds of the way there. I think pretty soon we're going to check our work again against block two and see where we are see how many rows we've got left to do before we can start our edging. As 
as I'm working this, I don't know if you can hear my work hitting the table. You can almost hear the heft that this block has in it, how heavy it is. our second block here. Let's check this for gauge and see where we're at. Ooh, I wasn't as far as I thought I was. Remembering to make sure that we tuck that little end out there. Well, I'm, I'm about two-thirds, I'm going to say. What do you think? Maybe 60% there. I'm telling you, this one is a yarn hog. It's nice and thick. This is beautiful. Look at those rows on my tin roof turning out so beautifully. All right, setting block two aside and continuing on, going into row three again. There. And working from the back of our work around the posts, completing another row of back, whoops, See how that falls off if I don't turn my hook just right? Back post, double crochet. Row three takes me a little bit longer to complete in row two simply because of just this little bit of awkwardness in how you have to hold your piece and turn your hook just so. Now you may have seen a knot just go through from the factory and I was watching that as it went through it appears to be a good knot. If it was a weak knot where they joined two of their color batches together as they're making their yarn, if it would have appeared to be weak, I would have completed a new knot to ensure the stability of my work. But as it went through, it looked like it was pretty stable. Just when I was thinking I had found my rhythm, I've lost it already. Struggling a little bit here as I get to the end of this next row. I was going pretty swimmingly there for a little bit. And here to the end. And one last time, right here at the very, very end. And chain one and turn. to just take some time to just kind of straighten your work out as you're working on it. It does tend to curl. It's just the nature of doing these front post, back post, double crochets seems to do that to my work. So don't get frustrated if it does that. Going back to row two, which is a front post, 
double crochet all the way across our work. And like I said, these seem to be a little bit easier to get around the post. You don't have those ridges in your way. It's a little easier to identify where your stitch is and it's easier to get your hook to go towards the front like that instead of coming in from the back. of yarn in your stash, in your yarn stash, if you had a bunch of stuff that maybe you don't have enough yarn for a full project, but this could be a really great stash buster. You could do one row or two rows or even three rows of your front post, back post with just a specific color and then change to another color and then again change to another color and use up some of the stash that you have in your craft room and you would have a very unique, colorful, thick, heavy afghan to get you through the winter months if you live where you uh, experience cold winter months like we do. here at the end where we turned and chain one and turn. And we'll do another row three. Nope, we want to go from the back over and down so it's just like a double crochet. I have to talk myself through it every time at the beginning of each row where that first stitch goes. And again, just because of a little bit of the awkwardness of how you have to hold your piece, the back post double crochets take me a little longer. So if you find that they take you a little longer, just know that's okay. I was going to say just know that that's normal. But if you know me, if you've been with me for a while, you know really there's nothing normal about me. <laughs> so we'll just say it's not that it's normal, but that it's okay. I experience a little bit of awkwardness working um, these back post double crochets as well. But we will have more blocks coming up that are going to utilize this stitch. It's not a stitch I find uh, that's used very often in crochet projects, but you will come across patterns that do use it, so it's important that you know this stitch. And it's amazing how just applying a stitch in a different manner from the front, from the back, from the front loop or the back loop, around the post, it's amazing how you can take the same concept of this double crochet and provide it with so many different looks depending on the application. stitch and then we'll do one around the very end here this is our number 25 chain one and turn we're almost there guys I can see we're getting close we're getting close to having our block completed let's do another row of our front post double crochet and then we'll check it against our block 
and see if we are square enough yet. Now this one might be a little difficult to determine square the way we traditionally do it by folding it into a triangle simply because it is a little curled. So I think we will primarily depend on our block two to see where we are. You hear it hitting the table as I work on it. Sounds like a dog wagging its tail and the tail hits the floor. <laughs> the bigger the piece gets, the more uh, vocal it becomes. Chain one and turn. Look at all those rows. Look at all those ridges. All right, let's see what we've got here on our block. Keeping in mind that if this tucks under, we're going to just put that right here where we're going to have our first row of our edging. enough room to really just work itself out here. We don't want to necessarily stretch it, stretch it, but we do want it to become its full potential size. Um, I'm gonna say maybe one more row, three, and I think we might almost be ready. I think one more row, three, and I'm gonna be ready for my edging. So, Let's go ahead and do one more row three, yarn over, and from the back up and over. See how I have to tell myself that every time? today. So we've had thunderstorms come through. Appreciate the work that they do to keep our roads as smooth as possible living on a gravel road. It requires a lot of maintenance, so I'm appreciative of that work that they do for us. some friends that refuse to come visit us out at the farm because they say our gravel roads are so bad. And there are times where they do get bad. Now when I get to the end of this row, I'm going to check it one more time against block two and see if this is my last row. So I'm completing row three as my last row. But keep in mind as you make your block, depending on your gauge, depending on different factors that are going to relate solely to you, you may be ending on row two and that's okay. That will affect how you begin your edging, however. So we will discuss that as soon as we start the edging we'll uh, discuss making sure that you you are right where you need to be for edging because each block will have the same edging. Sometimes it just takes a different approach to get there. Oops, that 
that one fell right off my hook. We've discussed that before, how that happens. And one last one here. I'm going to count these real quick, make sure that I have the correct number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I finished right where I need to be as far as the number of rows or the number of stitches across my row. Let's check to see if we do the triangle, how it looks. If we do our triangle fold over, I mean, dang, look at that. Maybe it does gonna, maybe it is gonna work for this one. Look at that, that is a pretty perfect little square there. Let's grab our block two and take a look at it here. I think we're good because right here is our first round of our edging and that's right about where we want it to be. So friends, I think we're there. We're gonna go ahead, take block two out and we're gonna start on our edging. Now, let's talk edging on this one again. I told you I would, would, I promised you we would. The rows, all of these ridges, if you look at this side of your work, it's very flat. This is the back of your work, the wrong side. This is the front of your work the right side. You want the right side facing up towards you as you work, as you put your edging on. And when you put this together for your afghan, you want this side facing up towards you. So if it was facing down, I would chain one and turn and then work across. But since it's already facing up and I need to start my round one edging, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my edging and then I'm going to work down around this way instead of across. I'm not going to turn it. So depending on how you end up will determine whether you work across the top again with your edging or if you start working down the side with your edging. Because this is facing up towards me, I'm going to start by working across the side. So I'm going to chain one and we're going to start our edging now. And right here in this little corner here, I'm going to put three single crochet. One, two, three. This is my corner and I'm just going to rotate this work so I am indeed going to be working down the side now. Now I'm going to fold my work in half and where's my little stitch marker? Here it is. I've got a little stitch marker here and I'm just going to indicate where the halfway point is on my work here because I want to work 25 single crochet equally across from here to here to here. So I'm going to do 12 across to here and then 13 across to here which gives me 25 across. This is going to give me a nice even surface to work our final row, um, our final round of our edging. So we don't have defined stitches across here the way we have defined stitches across here. So we have to determine where we're going to put our stitches probably just in these little holes as we go across and we want to get 12 of them by the time we reach this point about right here. We're not going to put our first one in the same little hole where our corner is. We're just going to pop over here. So here's one. And I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, and 12. So there I've got my 12 stitches. And you can already see it's going to start flattening this out. And just really, this is going to start taking shape beautifully. So let's take our stitch marker out. And I want 13 more by the time I reach my corner, making sure I leave room for me to put the corner in my corner. So, well, let's see here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put six in there. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oop, 
hips. 12. I got too many in there. I shouldn't have taken those stitch Let's take those out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So starting over, there's one. <laughs> Let's do this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. saves this corner here for my three to make my corner. So here's one, two, three. I'll just kind of smoosh that down and out and give it nice little tugs here. There we go. So we have 25 across. We have three in this corner here, three in this corner here, and 25 across the center. We're just going to rotate our work, and now I want to do 25 across to this corner. So, um, yeah, let's count 25. Now, in rows, in blocks in the past, we've had to add because one was taken up here in the corner and one's taken up in the corner here. Uh, let's see what we get, shall we? Might have to add one or two. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Around here is usually when I put an extra one in, so let's do that. There's ten. We've got two in this one here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I'm going to go ahead and put 21 in there with it, 22, 23, 24, and it takes me right here to 25, and we're just going to put 3 right here in the corner for our corner, and let's see how we're looking. give ourselves a little quarter turn here. We're going to fold our work in half again. We're going to mark it with our stitch marker because this is down the sides and we don't have really clear indication of where our stitches are. And again, we want to work 12 and 13 or 13 and 12 across. So, I'm not going to put them in the same place where the corner is. I'm going to move over. So, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, and here's 13 right here. Let's take this stitch marker out, and we're going to do 12 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine. Let's do ten, eleven, and 
12. And then I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to put three for my corner. One. Two and three. So there's our third side. And we're going to give it just a little quarter turn here. These fun little rows. <laughs> and we're going to do 25 single crochet across from here to here. Here is our first three for our corner. We're going to join right up here and then we'll finish off when we get there. All right, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to put ten in here with that number nine, so there's ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Let's do, I'm going to do 21 here, even though I've got enough room, because I don't want too much weight on that corner there, so. I'm going to go across to here, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch right here at the top of this corner that we did here. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to give myself a nice little tail here and cut that. I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to pinch those chains and really give a nice tug on my yarn. This is a knot that's not going to go anywhere. I've seen some uh, posts lately on some crochet groups and they keep saying, oh my gosh, my afghan came undone. If you do these two chains and pull them nice and snug, your afghan's not going to come undone. I promise you that. All right, let's move on to round two of our edging. And whatever color you determined is going to be your edging, uh, mine is my color A. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a slip knot, giving yourself a nice long tail that you can sew back in when we're done. There. I'm going to go to any corner I want and uh, just go into the corner here and attach it. So I'm just going to go right here, make sure that my tail is tucked away behind me here. And I'm just going to attach that with a slip knot and chain one. Okay, now this is my corner. Now I'm going to put three single crochet in my corner one, two, work along my side now and I'm gonna make 27 I don't have to use my stitch marker anymore because I don't have to divide it in half because I have these beautifully clearly defined stitches to work in I'm gonna work 27 until I get over to this corner over here so we have one stitches we should have just enough 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 
24, 25, 26, and 27. And here we are at our corner. We're going to put three single crochet in our corner and rotate our work. going to do 27 across to this corner and again we should have the correct number edging is done on that side. We're going to rotate our work and we're going to work 27 single crochet across our third side. crochet, or I'm sorry, single crochet, here in the corner. Oh, I got ahead of myself there, didn't I? And we'll rotate. And there's our third edging. And just one more to go on our fun little tin roof block for our heirloom afghan crochet along. 27 more. Here we go. One, two, Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen
22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And I'm just going to go right here into our first single crochet and do a slip stitch to pull those together there. And I'm going to crochet two chains. Give myself plenty of tail here. Cut that, pull it through. And we're going to do that same knot where I'm just going to kind of pinch it with my fingernail and pull that through nice and snug and that knot's not going anywhere. And there's our block. And see how it's not curling nearly as bad as it did before. You don't need to block it. Let's look at it with our other block here. And once we sew all this together, this is going to marry up beautifully. Look at that. And look at all of those pretty little rows <laughs> for our tin roof that's out on my chicken coop, out on my garden shed. We've just got this lovely little tin roof block. All right, friends, make sure you sew your ends in as you go. When you complete your block, sew your ends in. You don't want to do it at the end of your afghan when everything's put together because it's a little bit cumbersome. So sew all of your ends in and make sure that you take one of these little tabs that we discussed getting at the Dollar Tree. And of course, I've grabbed the whole lot here and got them all tangled up. And get yourself a pen and go ahead and mark what this is. This is the horizontal relief stitch. Let me move this out of the way. And this is block. 11 for our crochet along and then just go ahead and you can use your crochet hook here to just grab a post grab that string there and just pull that through that's the easiest way to do it it's less cumbersome and pull that through there and now this is marked and indicated so you know which one it is because we're going to need to know all of our blocks when we put everything together. I don't have this one marked yet. I need to get all of my blocks marked. But I've got this one marked. All right, friends, we will see you next week when we work on block 12. I hope you enjoyed this stitch. It, it was a little bit longer than some of our other blocks because all of this just kind of piles on top of each other. If we would have done this many rows with just double crochet, we would have been done quite some time ago. These ridges take up a lot of yarn and they compress your work down a little bit, like an accordion. So, ooh, an accordion stitch, that's a fun one to call it. But I'm gonna call it my little tin roof. All right, friends, until I see you for our next tutorial, remember to take care of yourself. I hope you're enjoying these crochet alongs. I hope that they are a source of relaxation and joy for you. That is the ultimate goal here. And when you're done, you're gonna end up with a beautiful heirloom quilt for your family. Until I see you again, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.